Hi, it's Alaska Granny. What's car camping? Does it mean you sleep in your car? It can mean that, but it doesn't necessarily. Car camping means that you're going camping somewhere that you can drive in your car. Car camping means you can bring more gear than if you're, say, backpacking because you don't have to be able to carry all of it with you. You can load up your car and take lots of extra things with you that you'd never be able to take if you had to carry it all in one uh, pack on your back. So when you're going car camping, you need to think about, do you want to sleep in your car or do you want to bring a tent? Do you have to have a shelter? If you're going by yourself, you could stay in your car. Or if you're in some kind of a predicament when you need to shelter in your car and say live in your car, then you may want to figure out how you could put down the seats, how you could make a spot that would be adequate for you to have your supplies and to have a place to lie down and sleep. If you're traveling with your family, it's unlikely you could all lie down and sleep in your car, so you would probably want to bring a tent. When you want to choose a tent, the first thing you want to do is figure out what your budget is and then how much room do you actually need, how many people will be using the tent. They come in all different kind of price ranges and if you're just going for a few days or you think you want to go on a long camping expedition or start camping every weekend, you need to decide how long do you want to use your tent and how much money are you willing to spend. Don't go overboard until you know if camping is actually for you. You can start with a basic tent, use it a few times, and then if you want something bigger and better, you can always upgrade later. Don't start with the most expensive tent to find out it's not something you really want to do. Next, you need your bed. So maybe you want a sleeping bag, maybe you have a sleeping mat or a pad. Maybe you even have something like a yoga mat that you could put that down and roll up in some comfy warm blankets. So decide what it is that you want, whether you're going to be sleeping in your car or in your tent. So you want to probably have something that is comfortable and that can stay all around you. So a sleeping bag usually works well for that. But if you like to kick your legs around and you don't want to be struggling with a bag, then perhaps you want to have a nice comfortable quilt. But just remember, if you get out in your camping and it gets very cold, the quilt doesn't stay around you like a sleeping bag. A sleeping bag makes a little nest around you and holds all the heat in. So it can actually be much better if you're out in cold weather. Decide what the weather is probably going to be like during most of your camping. The weather conditions where you plan to camp will determine the quality of the sleeping bag that you need. Cabin camping where you're inside is going to be a lot warmer than if you're out in a tent or even in your car. And you want to make sure that you have a sleeping bag that's rated for what the nighttime temperatures are going to be. The summer type or cabin camping sleeping bags are much less expensive, but if that's all you can afford, you can always take an extra blanket and you can make a sleeping bag liner. I'll put a link to a video I made about how you can make a simple sleeping bag liner. It gives you extra warmth. It also helps keep your sleeping bag clean, which uh, nobody wants to sleep in a dirty bag. So figuring out ways to stay clean can really be important. One of the coolest things that I found for car camping was this umbrella looking car windshield pop-up shade. And I think it's amazing. It folds down just like an umbrella, but then you unravel it and you pop it up. And look at the shape of it. It goes clear over the windshield of your car. It's huge. It's the shape of the rectangular windshield. It's hard to see in here because the thing is so big, but it really works. It doesn't weigh very much. And then when you're done shading your windshield, you just fold it back up like an umbrella. And it's amazing because it just stays in place. Those big folding accordion things, that are, they can be a real hassle. And then they're still big when you want to put them away. So I have been enjoying this as a windshield shade. So look for creative ways also to black out your windows, whether you want to put up little curtains or you want to put something over the window. Look for the Car Sunshade Umbrella. I'll put a link to this where I got it on Amazon, and it's fantastic. It's huge, 
fits the car windshield great. It really keeps the heat out. And look how easy it folds up and down. This has been something that's been a game changer for me when I want to go out in my car and it's hot or if I want to go on a little car camping excursion. In nearly every situation we need water and if you're going car camping you might consider buying a long rectangular water container because the big square ones are so bulky they take up so much big square room where I found that this type of a water container is better because you can slip it just on one side of the car and then if you need to sleep in the car you can sleep on one side and you can have your gear including your water on the other side and this type of a container works well. I also like this one because it has an easy to carry handle and then the spout you can turn it on its side you can use it this way or this way but if you put it this way it has a spout that you can pour the water out easily with a little spigot on this when it's down on your picnic table or you can put it up this way if you want but it's not the great big squares which can be very cumbersome and hard to maneuver if you're trying to fit everything into your car besides a warm sleeping bag you want to make sure that you have some warm clothes some layers things like a hat and some gloves and maybe even a scarf and if it's going to be cold at night you can even get a hot water bottle you fill it up with warm water and put it in your sleeping bag and it can help keep you warm all night long but if you're going camping and it's not cold where you are then some of these things aren't as necessary but you always want to be prepared just in case that's the nice thing about going in your car you're able to bring a lot more things with you Hand warmers are also a great idea. These are little chemical packets and you snap them and shake them and they create several hours of warmth. You can put them in your pocket, hence they're called hand warmers. They make some that are body warmers that you can put in the core of your body. There's also some foot warmers and these are also great. You can stick them right into your sleeping bag and help make it warm in your sleeping bag. Once you have your water figured out, you need to decide about your food. Camping food should be simple and easy. You don't want to have a great big hard sided cooler, but you can, depending on how you're planning to use your space. If you're going to be staying in your car, you want to try soft sided things. You can get an insulated uh, picnic type cooler and then you can stuff your cold food in here and then you can nestle it down even in the foot wells in the back seat of the car and then you can have your other gear fitting on top. When you have the big hard sided things like a cooler or the water jug they're very hard to navigate where they fit but if you use soft sided containers then it's going to be much easier to maneuver things around. So I like to put the cold food into a thermal bag like this. It's not going to stay a cold, of course, anywhere as long as a big hard-sided cooler, but you have to decide how long am I going to be gone and what are the parameters of the space that I have. You can also put your dry foods in another soft-sided bag and then you can have those. They're easy to figure out where to stick them into nooks and crannies in the car rather than having a great big box, a bin, or a hard-sided container. So think about how you're going to be using your space when you're deciding on how you're going to pack your car. Because space might be limited, I got a small Coleman Peak One stove. You can get much bigger ones, but it can be as simple as a one burner stove with the fuel that goes with it. So get the size that fits your group size and the space that you're going to have. Then you want to make sure you have your fuel to go with your stove and the matches you need to light it and to light your campfires. Have some type of a simple can opener. You can even try the military P38 or P51s I think they're called. I'll put a link to a video I made about how to use the P38 or the P51 and how you would use those to open a can. There's something that came from the military and maybe if you were ever in scouts, you had one of those and they taught you how to use it. Have some simple sturdy outdoor cookware. You can find little pots, little mess kits, sturdy silverware, things that you can use not only for cooking but you can also eat out of them. 
if it's especially if it's just you you may want to have some plastic dishes or some paper plates figure out what fits the space you have how long you plan to be gone and also what works with your budget next you probably want some kind of flashlights or headlamps you can get wind-up lanterns you can get simple headlamps I like the small USB flashlights because you can uh, plug these in even in your car and charge them up if you have the USB capability which most of our cars do and then you'll have even a tiny little flashlight will help every person in your group should have at least one flashlight and then have a few extra simply because they get dropped under the seat of the car or they get lost in the night and you want to be able to find the things you need when it's dark Something that I like to do when I tent camp is I bring along a few of the solar lights and then I put them where the guidelines are so that people don't trip on them in the night. It also helps you find where your tent is if you go out to say use the restroom in the middle of the night. Then you have the light whether you're returning to your campsite from using the bathroom or from a nighttime stargazing hike. You can find where your vehicle or your tent is just with a simple light from say even the Dollar Tree. Include extra batteries that fit your flashlights. Get a substantial first aid kit. I found this one recently and it's really neat because it's a sport essential first aid kit and it even comes in a dry bag so that it's a dry container, it's soft-sided, it can squeeze into a nook and cranny, it has all kinds of components in it but I really like that it's in a dry bag. You roll over the top, clip it together, and all of your contents stay safe and dry, even if you end up out in the rain. Then if you want to go boating, if it's raining, your contents are safe and dry, and it's in a manageable container that can fit just about anywhere in your car. I also have a basic water filter because you just never know when fresh water may not be available and you want to have pure water to drink. So whatever kind of water filter you have, whether it's a life straw, have some sort of a way to purify water because you just never know what conditions the water might be where you go. Consider no wild water safe to drink. You don't really know where it's come from, what's upstream from there, or who was there just before you. So have a way to purify water just in case there's no running water where you're camping. Next, think about hygiene. Bring a roll of toilet paper. One per person is what I do when I camp with a group. Everybody gets theirs in their own Ziploc bag. You're responsible to make yours last. It's amazing how much longer toilet paper lasts when it's your role and when you use it up you're the one who's in trouble and it's not a matter of well I'm just using and using and using it when it's gone somebody else will figure it out you'd be surprised how much less toilet paper is used when you're responsible for your own role I also like to put in a few extra uh, just trash bags for disposal of your toilet paper Whatever kind of camping you're doing, have some baby wipes so that you can stay clean. And one tip that I have is to get a spray bottle. You can put uh, vinegar and water in the spray bottle and you can use that to spray off and then wipe off your dishes where running water is in short supply. I'll put a link to a video I made about how to wash dishes with very little water that might help you figure out ways to make camping easier. Don't forget your toiletries, just like at home. You want a comb, a toothbrush, toothpaste, lotion, bug spray, sunscreen, all of those things that you would need. Have them together in some sort of a container that can seal up so they stay together and they're not lost under the seat of the car or dropped into the dirt when you're getting in and out. Organize your clothes and your gear into soft-sided duffel bags because you can just squish them around together. The better you organize your belongings into soft-sided containers, you can figure out how to maneuver them around in the car. You have no idea how much easier this is and how much more you can put in the car and have your things together. You can even go to, say, the Dollar Tree and get some of these little collapsible boxes and they, they're soft-sided. You can put your clothes in them, you could put some food in them, you could put all different kind of things in them, and then even fold them up and put them away 
if you don't need to use them for something today. One of the tips I have is I bring an empty coffee bag because these are pretty much airtight and you can put stinky garbage in these and fold it over and that can help not only keep your area smelling better, but if you're in an area where there's critters, you want to be extremely careful that you don't have food odors around for them to come and want to get in things. So this is one of the tips that I try to keep the garbage together, but then as soon as possible you want to dispose of it properly. Get some kind of little brush or broom so that you can sweep out your car, keep your things clean as possible, and then try not to have all your muddy shoes directly into the car. You can even get a simple doormat and put it out, then take your shoes off and on on the mat so that it keeps some of the dirt out of your car. You probably don't want to store your shoes out there, but you might in some circumstances. But that at least lets you get into the car, even take then your little broom and sweep the dirt off your shoes before you bring them into your car. Think about extra tools, have a pocket knife, some paracord, duct tape is good for any excursion, and then try to think creatively. What do I have that I can put together that I could actually go out and camp in my car and enjoy the time that I have experiencing the wonders of the world. You don't have to go very far even to adventure away from your home. As summer is here and you know we've stayed home so long with this crazy pandemic and maybe we're not sure we want to be around people or we can't afford to go on a big vacation anymore. You can still gather some supplies together and go on a little adventure in your car. Yes, even with the price of gas going up, you could drive a few miles even to a park or to a campground that's close by and have a little adventure by yourself or with your family. So leave a comment, tell us what are the items that you think are essential if you're gonna go car camping or even if you wanna live in your car for a while. There are a lot of possibilities and tips and tricks that we can learn from each other. So let's share so that we help make every single day we have be the best it can be. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might like it. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.